Hey, you are so welcome to Wellfield Church Online. Maybe you're one of our regulars at one of our usual gatherings on a Sunday, or maybe you're joining us online for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are so welcome. We're so glad that you're joining with us today. There's a first in Psalm 34, verse 8 that says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. It is our prayer that as you watch these services, that you will taste and see that God is good. More than that, it is our prayer that we step into and encounter the presence of God. So I want to simply pray before we start this service. Come Holy Spirit, come flood our rooms, come flood our lives at this time. Come prepare our hearts, come transform our hearts. And everyone said, Amen. Good evening, everyone, and give you, can I give you a warm welcome to this online service of evening prayer from Willowfield Parish Church. As we begin our time together this evening, let's pray that the Lord, by His Holy Spirit, will presence Himself with us. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. This evening, we welcome your presence with us. Come and stir our hearts to worship you. And tonight, Lord, may we not only listen to your word, but Lord, will you stir our hearts to respond? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We read in Isaiah 55, verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. And then in John 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And then some words from Joel 2, verse 13, Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and abounding in love, and He relents from sending calamity. As we reflect on these words, let us just take a few moments to remind ourselves why we are here this evening. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and our thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear His holy word proclaimed and to bring before Him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of His Holy Spirit we may serve Him and know the greatness of His love. So let's take a few moments and bring our lives before Almighty God, seeking His grace, His mercy, and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, and through our own deliberate fault by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we praise the name of the Lord, firstly, through the canticle, Song 
of light. O joyful light, from the pure glory of the eternal Heavenly Father, our holy, blessed Jesus Christ, as we come to the setting of the sun and see the evening light, we give thanks and praise to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit of God. Worthy are you at all times to be sung with holy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all creation. And then we continue to praise God through the words of Psalm 105, beginning to read at verse 1. O give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him, sing praises to Him. Tell of His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that He has done, His miracles and the judgments He uttered. O offspring of Abraham, His servant, children of Jacob, His chosen ones. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Esther Simpson now will bring us this evening's Bible reading and message. One thing I really enjoyed in lockdown was going for walks and seeing a whole variety of dogs, small, large, ultra hairy, super lion sleek. Some were really obedient and some went herring off at the least excuse. Some were cheerfully trotting along with their owners and one decided that it had walked far enough, sat down and no amount of bribing by its owner was going to make it move. This dog had not just dug its heels in, it had stuck its entire bottom on the ground and wasn't going anywhere. I wonder if any of us have ever been like that. So certain sure of our point of view or preferences or needs or fears that we're not for going any further. In today's reading, we meet an entire nation of people behaving just like that dog. Our reading today is from Exodus 16, beginning at verse 2. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you've brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they'll walk in my law or not. And on the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord had heard your grumbling, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. And then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked towards the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread, and then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. And when the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The most frequent word in this passage is the word grumble. It can be translated as murmured, 
complained, speak against, moan. But the same Hebrew word is also used, used to mean stay put, lodge. Basically, to put your backside on the ground and refuse to go further. I have some sympathy. These were people who'd been told what to do for the last 400 years as slaves in Egypt. And when promised freedom, a month later found themselves in a very inhospitable place. When they complained to Moses in verse 3, did you just bring us here to die? They're not exaggerating. Only the chapter before, they're having problems with their water supplies, and now the food that they've carried from Egypt is running low. And everyone, as well as being hot and dusty, is also hungry. Never a combination that makes for measured conversation. In verse 3, what are they doing? As well as complaining, they're looking back and saying, we were so much better off in Egypt. We had plenty to eat, forgetting that they were slaves, oppressed, and run by a really cruel ruler. Looking at today's psalm, at the end of Psalm 105, it talks about God's people remembering God's wondrous works and his miracles. But right at this moment, they're not remembering his miraculous deliverance from Egypt four weeks before. I wonder if there are times where we do not remember accurately. Things that we fail to remember, answered prayer, restored relationship, the passion and joy of turning to Christ. And are there things that we remember inaccurately? Find ourselves looking back on habits or lifestyles that might have brought certain perks, but were actually enslaving us. If only I could go back there, we think. Life would be easier. In verses 7 and 8 and 9 and 12, we see that they're not really grumbling against Moses and Aaron. Primarily, they're grumbling against God. I wonder where we complain. Do we do it on social media or to our spouse or our family or our close friends so it doesn't really count? And right now, I wonder how quickly we're falling into that habit. I've caught myself a few times in the past days feeling very sorry for myself or complaining about the new restrictions, failing to remember the goodness and provision of God. That kind of grumbling and complaining does not mark us out as those who walk by the Spirit. Jesus did not open his mouth, says Isaiah, when insults were hurled at him. Paul exhorts the Philippians, do everything without grumbling or complaining, possibly remembering the grumbling of the Israelites in the wilderness. It would seem that this might be a moment in when God is developing in us some of those things that he highly values, perseverance, forbearance, long-suffering, patience, and a deeper trust in his sovereignty and control. I wonder how many of us have, have our own deficiencies in these areas exposed by the extra pressure and squeezing of the last months. As we enter an autumn where the threat of the virus seems to loom larger again, I wonder how many of us are finding ourselves asking, how much longer? Have we not already done this? I'm aware of an impatience in myself and have been wrestling with what it points to, a fundamental desire in myself for the meat pots and full bread of Egypt, a questioning of both God's goodness and provision. Ultimately, I'm grumbling against him, digging my heels in and refusing to go further. God's reply in verses four and five could be outraged indignation. How dare they, after all I've done? And yet he promises bread raining down from heaven. Instead of wiping them out, he chooses to test them, to know whether they'll trust and obey him. Have you ever considered that God might lead you into a place as harsh as a desert in order to test you? We might prefer to see such hardship as spiritual oppression, but what of its spiritual opportunity? There are examples throughout the Bible of God testing his people this way. Abraham, Job, Daniel, Esther, Mary and Joseph, Peter, Paul, Jesus himself, 
learned obedience through what he suffered, said the writer to Hebrews. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness in order to be tempted, say the Gospel writers. We need not presume that our loving obedience and trust will not be tested and developed in a similar fashion. But rather than smiting an ungrateful and grumbling nation, God acknowledges their need and promises provision. In the evening meat, in the morning bread. There's a time gap and a type gap between them. God's provision does not necessarily arrive all at once, and the people are called to trust enough to eat meat in the evening and then sleep before being promised bread in the morning. The type gap. The flock of black quail are a natural provision. Quail existed before Israel went into the wilderness, and they certainly exist today. But bread, that's supernatural. They hadn't seen this kind of bread before. It wasn't Balfast Baps and Pitters falling from the sky. In fact, the people are so confused by what they see on the ground that they're looking at each other going, what is it? It's so different than what they expect that they're not immediately sure that it even is God's provision. I wonder if we've seen that same pattern in our own lives. Are there points where the answer has come quickly, has seemed normal or familiar, like the evening quail, but other times where we've had to wait, sometimes through a long, cold desert night, and the provision has looked strange. God still uses both time gaps and type gaps in his provision for us. Neither should discourage us from asking honestly. Notice that God's generosity at this moment is not to people who are asking politely, but who are complaining. How much more, Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew 7, will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? There's an interesting detail just after our reading. When the Israelites gather the manna, it's found that those who gather little did not have too little and those who gather too much do not have too much. The text is not absolutely clear. There might have been a pooling of resources and a sharing out. But miraculously, what is gathered is exactly enough for everyone to have enough. That is true abundance, not the prosperity of the individual, which is often at the expense of someone further down the line, not the fear of want that can lead to hoarding and exploitation, but realizing that we serve a God of the enough, a God who miraculously provides abundant provision so that as a community and as a people, everyone gets fair share. Do we trust that there will be enough if we share out what we have? With the prospect of an economic downturn and the potential for tightened restrictions on our movements, I think this passage offers both comfort and challenge to us. What a blessing to know that the God who heard and responded with deep and ongoing generosity to a grumbling, complaining, stubborn group of ex-slaves is the same God who will treat us with equal grace when we sit down and refuse to go further. What comfort we can and should take that the God who rescues slaves from Egypt continues to rescue us. But also the challenge Where am I complaining, quietly or loudly, publicly or privately? Do I acknowledge that ultimately I'm complaining against God? And dare I bring those grumbles to him? Where and when do I have a scarcity mindset? And how today might God be asking me to help break the power of that through generosity? Let's pray. God, thank you that you are patient with our grumbling and gracious with our fears. Thank you for all your provision and especially for your provision in the person of your son, who in giving himself has rescued us from slavery. Lord, we admit that there are times when we grumble. Forgive us our lack of trust. We confess that sometimes our fear of scarcity is stronger than our generosity. Forgive our meanness. Holy Spirit, Come and speak to us now. Assure us of our standing as beloved children and put your finger on any action that you would have us take 
as a step of trust in your goodness and in the abundance of your grace. Amen. Thank you, Esther. Sarah Miles is now going to lead us in this evening's hymn. If you can, please stand and let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Yanis Newell is going to continue to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. The calling for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, we thank you for your great love and generous mercy in sending your Holy Spirit upon your church. May we know our need of you and humbly come before you each day in repentance and openness to be filled afresh and renewed by your Holy Spirit. Lord, help us especially in these days to be diligent and eager to come together to worship and praise you with our brothers and sisters, so encouraging one another to be trusting in you and in your promises to all your children. You are our rock and solid foundation at all times and in all circumstances. God, would you strengthen us and your church in all the world, make us bold in sharing our faith and being active in what you have called us to do, giving courage where there is fear and faint-heartedness, bringing comfort and hope where there is none. May all be equipped and empowered by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you would give favour to the nominators here in Willowfield as they seek to be guided by you for our new rector. Make your voice clear to them and to the person you have chosen. Help us as a congregation to be patient and prayerful in our waiting, knowing that your timing is perfect. God, our healer, stretch out your hand and heal and protect those who are sick and suffering. Be with those who have a special need and give freedom to all who know danger, violence or oppression. Comfort the bereaved with your loving arms and tender voice. Grant, O Lord, that the word which we hear this day may so take root in our hearts that we, living in accordance with your holy will, may ever praise and magnify your glorious name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this evening, and as we finish, let us pray. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love. Amen. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this service. We pray that you were blessed. We would love you to connect further with Willowfield Church. You can go to willowfieldchurch.co.uk to find out more about us, or you can go to willowfieldchurch.online to watch all our online services. We pray that you were blessed. Thank you so much for joining us. Be blessed, be encouraged, be safe. We miss you all. <laughs>